I talk a lot about the Tech 3 strategic cruisers on this channel, like a lot, a lot, but it's not the only thing that you can use if you want to go ratting in C3J space systems. In fact, there is a ship that is readily accessible to most pilots, despite the fact that they may not have skills in any other ship in its tonnage. I am of course referring to the Society of Conscious Thought Praxis, a battleship that doesn't require battleship skills and is surprisingly cheap to fit and get up and running. The only skills you're really going to need to run this absolute monstrosity are the weapon skills, so once you've got those trained you're pretty much good to go and you can start C3 ratting to your heart's content. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Praxis, how we can use it to start C3 ratting nice and quickly and easily, and have some great fun in some J-Space wormhole systems. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi, and the monstrosity you see on the screen in front of you is the Society of Conscious Thoughts Praxis Battleship. This is the battleship that does not require battleship skills. It is surprisingly cheap, surprisingly versatile, and surprisingly powerful. It can run the same C3 combat sites as the Tech 3 strategic cruisers that I've been showcasing on this channel, but it does so cheaper. It's not without its downsides, as we will talk about later. Least of all, is the fact that apparently when it's docked you can never get it not looking blurry. Like, I don't know what setting is doing this, but every other ship looks fine, just the Praxis is always at least partly out of focus. Just another reason for me not really to like, in you know, flying the big battleships, I guess. Anyway, in this video I'm going to show you how we set this up, how we use this, and how we can go C3 ratting with it, and if you do find this video useful, please spend a brief second just to hit like on it, as it does really help the channel, and drop me a comment down below letting me know how you find it. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel and help me keep making content just like this, you can do so by heading across to my Patreon, my PayPal tip jar, or my Redbubble merchandise store. All of those really help out and they are linked in the description of this video. Otherwise, with all of that said and done, let's jump right into talking about the Society of Conscious Thoughts Praxis and how we can set this up for C3 ratting. First of all then, let's take a look at the Praxis hull bonuses. Immediately, it should be apparent to you that there is no skill bonuses on here that scale with individual skills. Like for example, if you were looking at something like the Golem, how that scales both from the Marauder skill and the Kaldari battleship skill, or how a Rattlesnake scales from the Kaldari battleship and the Galente battleship skill. You don't need any skills to maximize the potential of the Praxis, though of course any skills that you may have in stuff that directly affects it will of course make it better, but we'll talk about those more later on. The Praxis only has role bonuses, so training specific skills isn't going to directly impact it, only the secondary skills, how those benefit the individual components that you're using on the Praxis. We have a role bonus, 25% bonus to large hybrid turret, large energy turret, and large projectile turret damage, a 25% bonus to heavy missile, cruise missile, and torpedo damage, which already shows that you can kind of use any weapon system you like on this, and then a 50 percent bonus to drone hit points and damage, which means both you have the high slots and the drones to kind of work together and give some versatile damage output. Finally, there's a 37.5% bonus to core and combat scanner probe strength, which is always going to be a nice thing to have if we're working with wormholes and J-space systems, just in case your exit hole collapses and you do need to scan a new way out. Beyond that though, as I said, nothing directly scales from this. I'm going to be fitting this using cruise missiles, so we are going to need to have some missile skills involved here. First of all, of course, we're going to need the cruise missile skill at its basic level just to be able to fit cruise missile launchers onto it, and we're actually going to be using Tech 2s, so we do need cruise missile 5. That said, if you don't want to go with cruise missiles and you'd rather go with something like uh, rapid heavy missile launchers, then training into the heavy missile skill is going to give you that capability. Or theoretically, if you wanted to use hybrids, energy, or projectile turrets, again, just training into those skills will unlock that aspect of the Praxis. It's a very open ship that is going to benefit from a lot of different skills that you have trained elsewhere. So, let's take a look at the fit. 
Now this fit, of course, is not the be-all, end-all of the Praxis. This is just what I'm using and what I'm going to be showcasing in this video, and I'm certain some of you out there are going to have some ideas of how you could fit this to better sh suit your direct needs. For me, though, this is a remarkably cheap ship. It is less than 300 million ISK, and that's with all the ammunition that I have stocked in this as well. We have a whopping 763 DPS, just from our missiles. We then have three 326 DPS, 332 DPS, sorry, I cannot read numbers apparently, from the drones that we're going to be launching. That's over 1,000 DPS for less than 300 million, and it only requires us training into the skills that allow us to actually fit the individual modules. For the high slots here, I have gone for Cruise Missile Launcher 2s. You can get away with Cruise Missile Launcher 1s, but I like having the precision cruise missiles. These are just so much better at applying their damage to the smaller, faster targets that are inside these C3 Ratting Anomalies. Again, if you're struggling with this, you could swap these cruise missiles for Rapid Heavy Missile Launchers and go with that instead. It will do very similar, although slightly lower DPS, but again, the Praxis is all about working with with what you have. Remember, we are going to be going up against sleepers. Sleepers have a omni-resist profile, meaning the same resistances to every damage type. So whilst I've got Nova Precision Cruise Missiles currently slotted in, you could quite comfortably do this with Inferno, Mjolnir, or Scourge. I do also carry the other types with me as well. I think they're called Fury, um, which I use against the battleships that sometimes appear in these anomalies. But for the most part, we're going to be stocking up on Precision Cruise Missiles and using those. You'll note there is a high slot available, you can theoretically pop a, a probe scanner launcher into here, even if it's just a tech 1 variant, so that we can scan down sites if we need to find a way out. If a wormhole collapses, we can go with this. I tend to be only ratting one system over from where I'm based, so for me, I don't really have that fitted. I probably should fit it, and I probably will in future, so if you want to fit that high slot with something, pop in a core scanner launcher, even if it's just a scanner 1, just so you can get those wormhole exits down. Now for the tank here, Oh boy, we're going Shield Tank. Shield Tank just seems to work really nicely with this because we've got a whole ton of mid slots that we can use and there's not much else I really need in those mid slots. We start this off with an extra large Shield Booster 2. Again, you can get away with the Tech 1 variants, although the Shield Booster 2 does give you a bit better stats and helps with survivability. So again, we want to train up the skills required for this. And if you're ever wondering what these particular skills are, of course, you can just go to the info and then we can go to requirements and you'll see here that we do need Shield Operation 5 and Power Grid Management 1 in order to be able to fit this. And I'm not going to do this for every single module, but just check what you need. You can do this by going onto the market and opening up each of these individual modules and checking that you have the skills. Add them into a skill plan if something like the Praxis is what you're looking to go for. For the below this to continue the tank, we've got a couple of multi-spectrum shield hardeners. Again, I've gone for the twos because they are just better than the ones, but make sure you have the skills required for this. Followed by a shield boost amplifier two and a copacetic compact shield boost amplifier. Now, even with power grid management and CPU management right the way up at max, you are going to need to drop down to a copacetic on the second one here because of that compact reduction to the fitting requirements in order to fit this in. You can see how tight the CPU is on this. I've literally got 0.5 teraflops of free space. Finally, our last two slots here are both eutectic compact cap rechargers just to help with cap stability. We are not cap stable in this ship at all. You do need to bear that in mind. It is something we're going to have to handle in the anomalies as you'll see in the combat section later, but we are trying to get that as cap stable as possible. In the low slots then, we've got a couple of, well, four capacitor flux coils too. These again help with cap stability. We're not cap stable, but without all of this, we run out in seconds. We need all of this to push up the cap stability to the best of our ability. Essentially, we're going to be using that extra large shield booster on cycles. When you take a bit of damage, you can just boost it back up in very quick cycles, then turn it off and let your capacitor recharge. And then once you start getting down to say half shield, cycle it and up you go again until you're in low capacitor and so on and so forth. It's all about clever shield booster cycling. 
Finally, in the bottom slots here, we have a Dyad Coprocessor 1, a Crosslink Compact Ballistic Control System, and a C3A Hiva Saitsu Ballistic Control Subsystem. Essentially, this combination here works out better than any other combination that we can fit with the fitting requirements that we have. It gives us more DPS than we would otherwise, and ultimately, this is kind of where a decent bit of the cost comes from. That C3A is fairly expensive, but essentially, we then have to use the compact in the second slot but this does still work out better than any other combination that I could personally find at least. In the rig slots then to round off this fit we are currently running a large capacitor control circuit one, a large core defense operational solidifier one and another large core defense operational solidifier one. Again this is about pushing up the shield on this so that we've got a nice big shield tank that we can work with. We then have again more cap stability on that capacitor control circuit just to get us to even where we are here. We still run out in 3 minutes 25 with everything running but most of that if we were to simulate this is on that shield booster. If I turn off the shield booster completely you'll see that we are completely cap stable at almost 100% without it, which means when we're not running the shield booster, that capacitor recharges very, very quickly. Clever cycling is all this needs. Finally, it is worth just mentioning the drones. I am currently running here this particular setup when it decides to load, mostly Kaldari Navy Wasps. This is what we're going to be using for the most part. We only have 100 megabits per second, so we can only get four of these out in the field at once. Obviously, if we're using standard Vespers, we can get those out, we can get all five of those out, or five Hornets as well. For the most part, though, these are doing better damage than five Vespers will, so four Kaldari Navy Wasps um, instead of five Vespers. The reason I have Vespers and Hornets is on the off chance that I get uh, uh, jumped by something, or when I really need to kill something a little bit smaller, just that little bit faster, and the application really helps. That said, for the most part, the Kaldari Navy Wasps wasps are essentially all I ever have out at any time. In the combat section you'll see that I do swap to some vespers mainly because I'm an idiot and I didn't bring enough Kaldari navy wasps so when some of them started taking damage um, I didn't have ones to replace them with but again that's jumping ahead to the combat section. I will of course put this fit in the description down below. You can then copy that into Pypha and see how it works with your skills or you can copy it into the game and see how it works with your skills. And if you do have a variation of this, let me know. Honestly, I would love to cover the Praxis for C3 Ratting with other weapon types as well. For me, the missiles is the one I enjoy most because I already have those kind of skills. I'm heavily skilled into missiles anyway, so just training up cruise missiles was literally all I needed. Because I'm already skilled into all of these other modules, I didn't have to worry about skills for them. It was only the cruise missile skills that I actually required, which meant once those were done, boom, there's your Praxis. Anyway, with all of that said and done then, let's actually undock this and showcase it in action. As you can see, I'm coming straight out of one fortification frontier stronghold and moving into a second one. This means I've already taken some damage on my Kaldari Navy Wasps. You can see four of them in my drone bay on the right hand side are still completely healthy. One of them, I did get a little bit of armor damage on it, so I've pulled that back and moved it into an injured subcategory. But we're moving now into a second fortification frontier stronghold, and on arrival, it's pretty much business as usual. I've got my uh, multi-spectrum shield hardeners running, I'm then going to drop the mobile tractor unit as soon as I stop warping, and as usual, I'm going to bookmark that mobile tractor unit. That is an important thing to start off with, especially if, like me, you're going to be salvaging the site later, but also just sometimes you need to warp off in a hurry for whatever reason. Someone jumps in on you, or you drift far away from a mobile tractor unit and you use it as a warp point to come back to. Entirely up to you. It's just a good habit to get into. I put it in a shared folder because, again, I have an alt that I go salvaging with. Now, the first wave of a Fortification Frontier Stronghold has two Awakened Defender Cruisers. These are straight-up DPS, and two Emergent Defender Frigates. These are DPS that will attack your drones, and they also can web you. Not a huge problem here. It is worth noting, however, that the Awakened Defender Cruisers are also the trigger for Wave 2, so we want to kill the Emergent Defenders first. 
And you'll see the precision missiles do pretty well, as do the drones. That first emergent defender is already down. We then move on to the second one. Obviously, missiles do have a uh, cruise missiles do have a very long cycle time, um, so it does take a little bit before we can start shooting the next thing. I'm using the precisions here because they're working for me, but if you are lower in missile skills, you might, as I've said before, want to change to rapid, heavy missile launches um, because those will do less damage than the cruises can but they will have better applications, so you're going to get closer to the lower paper number. It's kind of up to you. If you're heavily skilled into uh, heavy missiles already, and you don't want to uh, skill into cruise missiles, that's absolutely a viable way of doing it. Anyway, at this point, I'm basically just letting the drones do their thing. You'll see I'm not even bothering to orbit with the Praxis at this point because I take so little damage from all of these ships. I'm destroying them before they really even get close and start doing stuff. It should be noted that one of my Kaldari Navy Wasps is taking a little bit of damage. I should be watching that just to make sure that, you know, I can pull it back if it starts taking heavy damage. But again, I'm not really great at drone management and so I often forget to do that. But you should be better than I am, right? That's kind of the point of these. Again, if I can showcase in a video that an idiot like me can make this work, then someone with a few more brain cells to run together for warmth should get better results. Anyway, the first Awakened Defender is about to go down. Boom, down it goes in one go because those cruise missiles are doing a lot of damage per strike. Yes, there's a long time between launches, but the launches themselves um, do a surprising amount of damage. You can see how much the wasps are doing there for hitting. And then on the damage numbers, we should get a nice big one pop up in a second um, for the missiles themselves. As usual, you do need to be watching D-Scan closely. Because the Praxis isn't really moving and it's just basically moved to the next target and just keep launching missiles, you do have the capability just to keep tapping V with your thumb or whatever, um, just to make sure nothing is trying to jump you. You do also have a, uh, you know, a fairly slow uh, warp time, so you do need to be very aware of someone dropping on you. Fortunately, it's not overly expensive if you do lose this ship, but... We don't really want to lose the ship now, do we? Some people do like to, you know, pre-align and start moving towards a target, but remember, if you are stationary, then that is as fast as you can warp without already moving towards the target. To warp, you need to be within five degrees facing of the thing that you are warping to and 75% maximum velocity. And ultimately, if you're moving at 75% maximum velocity in the Praxis, well, you're going to be moving away from everything, and uh, I just rather sort of sit here, keep stationary so that my warp time is as low as it can be without doing the whole, uh, you know, actually drifting towards something at 75% maximum velocity already, and it works nicely for me. Anyway, wave two. Wave two of a Fortification Frontier Stronghold has two more Awakened Defenders, the cruisers we've just been fighting, alongside two Awakened Upholders. The Upholders are a little bit more nasty. They like to keep range, they do a decent whack of damage, they have energy neutralizers and stasis webifiers. Again, because we're sitting stationary, the stasis webs aren't a problem to us, but those two energy neutralizers really, really are. We don't want those for the most part. It's not a huge problem to us considering, again, we are incredibly capacitor stable as long as the extra large shield booster is not active. And again, once we turn off the extra large shield booster, that capacitor does recover very, very quickly. As you can see, I just, you know, cycle it, I take a little bit, and then boom, the capacitor is nice and full in seconds. But again, we just don't want to keep cycling it and being muted. Essentially, though, it is also worth noting that the Awakened Upholders are also the trigger for Wave 3. Do not kill both of them. The second that the second Awakened Upholder goes down, Wave 3 will spawn. And if you do that with two Awakened Defenders left, that's a lot of incoming damage that can be tricky to deal with even for a Praxis. Now at this point I am going to skip ahead a little bit because it's nice simple just kind of shooting everything. I'm going to pull this particular drone back because it's taking a bit of damage. Unfortunately they are also very slow moving drones at this point in time um, so they do take a little bit of time to come back. I think I also accidentally hit the F key to send them back off to a new target which sends that one straight back out again. No it is coming back. No yep yeah, there we are. It's fighting again which means I did accidentally hit the F key and off it goes to take a bit more damage. But anyway Let's skip ahead to the end of this wave. 
At this point, you can also see that I am now down to three Kaldari Navy Wasps, and instead I'm using two Vespers instead of the fourth Wasp. This is because one of them did actually end up getting destroyed, and one of my Kaldari Navy Wasps is on very low armor, so I don't really want to send it out there because I don't want to have to replace that as well. So the Vespers was not as powerful as the sing the two Vespers aren't as powerful as a single Wasp. It is still better than losing one of those Wasps and ending up with only three. So we're going to still have the five drones out there doing their thing. Now, this final wave is a little bit different. You'll see that I am now orbiting the mobile tractor unit nice and slowly, nice and closely. It's not vital that you do this, it just reduces the incoming damage a little bit because you'll see that my shield is suddenly taking more damage and I do need to run the shield booster fairly aggressively. You'll notice that the shield booster really does chew the capacitor, but once we turn the shield booster off, if you watch the capacitor, it does recharge extraordinarily quickly. So I can afford to take a little bit of damage whilst that recharges, then run the booster just to cycle it up again, and we just, you know, reduce this as you know, you cycle as required. Now that damage is coming from that Sleepless Upholder. That is a battleship that does a lot of damage per hit. The ability to move a little bit just reduces the chance of some of the really nasty shots. Um, but again, it's not 100% vital. Just kill that Upholder as quickly as possible possible because that is your big damage right now. Fortunately with the Kaldari Navy Wasps and with cruise missiles at this, at this point I have swapped to I think they're the Fury missiles uh, because they just do a bit more damage per strike and the application doesn't matter because the Sleepless Upholder obviously is a battleship so we actually hit with almost all of the application. I can kill this nice and quickly and now that we're at a bit more range and settled in you'll see my damage has gone down, my capacitor's still about you know good Good sort of only a third down. Second I turn off the shield booster, boom, up that capacitor goes. Like we're already at three quarters refilled capacitor. It astonishes me how quick this happens. Anyway, the rest of this wave is two more awakened defenders, which are not a particular problem to us at all. We have an awakened preserver, which is a remote rep ship that will be repairing some of the other ships as you're shooting at them. Sometimes you decide you want to take this one out first. For me though, I'd rather just get rid of that other awakened upholder because they are particularly nasty. They like to attack my drones, and again, that ability to neutralize me can prove problematic at times. I'm not at all cap stable, especially with that shield booster running. Um, so with the shield booster running and a newt on you, your capacitor can drop surprisingly quickly. Interestingly enough as well, you'll see I've accidentally left the shield booster running for quite a bit of time. It's only the uh, the audible alert that the capacitor gives when it's low uh, charge that actually gets me to turn that off. But watch the capacitor and look how fast it recharges the second that extra large shield booster is turned off. I've done a little bit of drone management as well because at this point I have now lost a, th a fourth, a second wasp, so I'm only down to three Kaldari Navy wasps. I've had to bring out the injured one for the time being and I'm still running those two Vespers. Not ideal, I should have been pulling those back sooner, but again I suck at drone management and these are very slow moving drones which do take a lot of damage as they're returning to the Praxis, so be aware of that. Otherwise though, at this point in time, with that upholder down, this is pretty much done and dusted. At this point in the uh, in the anomaly, my biggest threat by far is someone jumping in on me. The actual enemy ships themselves pretty much do nothing. You'll see I've just turned the shield booster off, I'm letting my drones do their thing, and then I'm just going to keep hitting everything else with the missiles and just eventually clear this up. Final Awakened Defender is about to go down. Remember, there are no triggers on the final wave because, well, there's nothing to trigger. The beauty of the Praxis here as well is that I am already sitting right next to that mobile tractor unit, so I don't need to warp off and warp back in to be able to loot anything. The second that that final ship goes down, I bring the drones back to me because if I need to warp off, I either want them to have already returned or be right next to the mobile tractor unit so I can come and grab them later if whoever jumped me hasn't already stolen them. But with those back, I'm going to sit and descan, and I'm going to watch now as those wreckages are brought into the mobile tractor unit. I know that there's that one final ship that needs to be drawn in. Looking on my overview, I can see it 14 kilometers away, 13, 12, and just wait for that to get drawn in. Once that's been brought in, I can loot everything and warp off to safety. So there we are, there it comes. Keep descanning, wait for that to trigger, 
Now we open the mobile tractor unit's cargo, we grab everything, I'm then going to scoop the mobile tractor unit back to my hold and warp off to safety. I'm not clearing the bookmark because I am going to come back with my salvage ship and get all of the stuff out of those wrecks as well because it only takes a couple of seconds and eh, it's extra loot. Anyway folks, that is the C3 Praxis. I hope you enjoy this ship. Remarkably cheap, remarkably easy. That entire site has taken about 15 minutes. And as you can see, it's a lot of ISK. You're looking, I think, 42 million ISK for that site in 15 minutes. Anyway folks, that is everything for this video. If you fly a Praxis, let me know. Let me know how you get on with it, how you fit it, if it's different to my fit. If you try this fit out, let me know how you get on. I want to see more people running in J space. I want to see more people having fun in wormholes and just enjoying EVE Online to the fullest of their ability. Otherwise, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden!